Uh, this is my uh, new homebrew transceiver. I've now reached the stage where I need to calibrate the S-meter. In this transceiver I'm using a TFT display. And what I need to do uh, first is set the scale up so that an S9 signal reads S9 on the meter. Now an S9 signal is uh, specified as minus 73 dBm. So we need to get a signal generator that's producing 70 3 minus 73 dBm into the front end of the receiver. For this signal I'm going to just use a low cost leader signal generator, this one here, which I've set up around about 0 dBm. And I'm feeding the signal generator into a set of attenuators. Uh, the first attenuator you see here is a uh, uh, 50 dB attenuator switched in 10 and 2 20 dB steps. And I'm measuring the output power of the attenuator as minus 53 dBm. I'm not measuring it directly at the SIG Jenny. It's better to measure at the output of the attenuator which I know is 50 ohms whereas the SIG Jenny could be a little bit variable. That is going to feed into a HP attenuator which is down here and that goes from 0 to 120 dB in 10 dB steps. So I'll just put that in shot and I'm just going to hook that up. So I'm going to get an extra 20 dB out of the HP generator. So here is the signal going into the TFT meter and showing S9. I've already set this up so I'm just uh, demonstrating uh, the result of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to vary the signal levels and make a plot of the AGC voltages feeding the S meter to see how the um, signal varies the voltage coming out of the um, the S meter circuit varies with input signal. So here we're uh, going to measure the voltages coming out of the AGC system feeding the S meter. I have the probe down here on one of the connectors. This is the connector that feeds the S meter. The little XT, the little KF connectors are quite handy. You can put a bit of wire in, and you can uh, go to your meter. There's the multimeter. And what I'm going to do is write down the voltages for each uh, 10 dB step. And uh, we've just got a bit of paper here, which we've already done a, a bit of a run on it. So you can see what we've got. And we have um, S9 plus 40, 7.77 volts, which you saw on the meter, all the way down to around about minus, uh, minus 60. We get a bit of noise down there. So we've plotted the voltage. We've plotted what the, um, the scale is showing on the meter and we've been doing it in 10 dB steps because that's uh, the attenuator moves in 10 dB steps quite accurately. So there's the uh, HP attenuator plus the other one and down here we have the uh, S meter. So that's showing S9 plus 40 and we're reading 7.77 volts there and we'll just switch in a bit of attenuation. That's uh, 10 dB, 20 dB, 30 dB, and now we're down to S9. We just keep going 10 dB steps. And we, what we did, we wrote down the voltages. That's the AGC capacitor slowly discharging. So now I've added around 40 dB, and we're just under S3 to... Uh, so S3 to S9 is... Um, 6 by 6 dB or 36 dB so we're not too badly off so at uh, another um, 40 dB in from S9 where the, the meters uh, showing pretty right. So having got all these figures I can now plot a, plot a graph and I can have a look at the curve. Now the S meter calibration is a little bit complex in that signals below S9 move in 6 dB per S point. Signals above S9 move in 10 dB per mark and the divisions are very similar between the S, S points and the 10 dB marks so there are actually two curves involved uh, the curve below S9 is 6 dB per mark and the curve above S9 is 10 dB per mark so the software has to be in, written in such a way that we can actually um, produce the right steps above S9 and below S9 and so 
This particular meter is driven by the Arduino Nano and I've written a sketch which has a switch at S9 to change the curve and the equation basically. So here we've plotted the values um, we've uh, measured on a graph for minus 70 dB up to S9 plus 40. 0 dB actually represents S9 which is minus 73 dBm. As you can see from the graph there are two curves. The curves at low level signals and the curve that occurs once the signal gets above minus um, minus 20 reference to that zero. So the software will need to take care of that curve and that curve. That one's almost a straight line and it's flat. Here from about minus 50 to minus 20 we're getting something like 3 volts to uh, nearly three over 3 volts change whereas from minus 20 to S9 plus 40 it's less than a volt. Now this TFT meter is driven by an Arduino with a software sketch so we can uh, manipulate uh, the position of the bar for each 10 dB step by changing the software some equations. The response curve of the AGC or AGC loop it can be a little bit complicated and it's not necessarily a straight line. In this particular transceiver there are a couple of log linear devices the AD603 and the BF904 so the actual closed loop response for different levels um, is a little bit different. Uh, than a, it's not a straight line nor is it exactly log linear either. We've uh, drawn the display up so that it looks like a traditional meter. Uh, of course I can move these numbers anywhere I like but I've made it look a bit like a normal S meter. The divisions from S9 to S plus 40 roughly 10 dB steps are uh, the yellow bar to the little white bun and so on. The divisions from S9 down to S8 and S7 are a little bit different in length. So we need to um, change what happens to the length of the bar below S9 versus to what happens to the bar above S9. <coughs> so in the Arduino sketch I have two equations with an if statement so that if the signal is below S9 I have one particular equation which matches that set of scales and another equation above S9 which matches that particular set of scales. Now in traditional transceivers the S meter will have diodes and, a, and, a, and semiconductor devices which will more or less um, show that particular type of scale. But when you're driving the S-meter with a software, you can actually do quite a lot of things, or quite a lot more than you would normally do on an analog meter. For example, you could, actually get, uh, you could actually mark each of these positions by varying the dBs in and then having a lookup table. So that the actual position of the bar is determined from a lookup table given the input signals. And you can get very very accurate uh, displays and you can also give a numeric display somewhere on the display.